Greetings and praise the Lord. Reverend Lydia with the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I bring you greetings from the Online Church of Uganda. Yes, the Online Church of Uganda, we always pray for you. Yes, we always pray for you that our good God will sustain you through all life's challenges. Hallelujah. Yes, brothers and sisters, Today, I come with the word of God and I'm here to talk about, you know, we are doing a theme on living for Christ. And the sub theme I have today is do good. So I talk about living for Christ, do good. Brothers and sisters, to all the children of God, you and me, we are expected to do good. Yes. We are expected to do good, to make a contribution. Yes, doing good at all times, doing good in our societies, in our communities, doing good to all the people. It is, I believe, doing good is a requirement for a happy life. I want to think that we have had a statement, be good, do good, and make good. So brothers and sisters, the call is that you and me will do good. Shall we please turn to the reading of God's word? Please open your Bible. Let's read together. I will read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. What does it say? Finally, all of you be like-minded. Be sympathetic. Love one another. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil, or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing, the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, Peter, Apostle Peter, as he writes to his readers, he calls upon his readers to do good in all situations bad times or good times in moments of crying in moments of joy to do good hallelujah so today the lord has sent me the lord has sent me to you yes to challenge each other to challenge you to challenge myself as well to endeavor to do good brothers and sisters it is a choice it is a deliberate decision you've got to make, I have got to make. So in the portion of scripture we have read, there are amazing points that can help you, that can help me to do good at all times. Number one, brothers and sisters, according to that portion of scripture, Apostle Peter is saying, be of one mind. Be of one mind. And what does it mean to be of one mind? I believe when we choose to be of one mind, it is simply to avoid living in hostility with each other. Yes, to deliberately choose to agree with one another. And I know there are moments where we have got to agree, to disagree, and then continue with life. To live at peace with one another. To the marriage who are listening to me, brothers and sisters who are married, we all know that it is impossible to live a happy marriage or to experience a happy marriage if you are not about to agree with your spouse. You know, it's not about being right all the time. It is not about people accepting your opinion all the time. Yes, the call is that you choose to agree in all situations by the grace of God. Amos 3 tells us, can two walk together unless they agree? No. So the call to you and to me is in all societies, at work, wherever God has put you, at home, to choose to be of one mind. To agree. To agree with your colleagues. Yes? And the only way you and me can choose to have that one mind is by allowing the mind of Christ to control us allowing the mind of Christ to reign in our lives. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, do good by living in agreement. 
living in one accord. Number two, in the portion of scripture we have read, Apostle Peter is calling upon all the readers, you and me, who are engaging with this portion of scripture. Number two, to love one another. Peter is talking about the kind of love or the warm love that should exist among believers. Brothers and sisters, we have a role model, and that is Jesus Christ. He left everything for you and for me. He died because of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. So the love of God compelled him to send his son. The love towards you and me, which is unconditional, brought Jesus on that cross to die for you and for me. So it is the love of Christ that can help us, that can compel us to love one another. In order for me or for you to do good, I have, called, I have got to deliberately live in love. And what does it mean to walk in love, to love one another, to be compassionate, to be tender-hearted, tender-hearted, to be sympathetic, to be polite, to be kind, to accommodate one another. Follow Christ's lifestyle. Brothers and sisters, when we love one another, then we live a fruitful life. So I will say, do good by loving one another. Praise the Lord. Number three, brothers and sisters, from this portion of scripture that we have read. Hallelujah. Yes, Apostle Peter is calling his readers, he's calling all of us, and God is calling you and me to say no to pride. You know, when we are proud, we cannot do good. No, we can't. We are too full of ourselves. And sometimes when we are too full of ourselves, we are not of any help. So the call to you and to me is to say no to pride. Remember, pride comes before a fall. Yes, when we live in pride, be rest assured that you are about to collapse. You are about to crumble. And according to Proverbs 6 and verse 16, among the six things that God hates is a proud look. So for us to please the Lord, for us to do good and bring glory to our Father in heaven, we've got to say no to pride and say yes to humility. So I will say, brothers and sisters, do good by choosing to be humble. Hallelujah. Learning from Jesus Christ. According to Philippians chapter 2, let's learn from Jesus Christ. Please do good by choosing humility. And number four, according to this portion of scripture we have read, for you and for me to do good in our communities and wherever God sends us is, say no to revenge. Mm -hmm. Say no to revenge. Do not hold a grudge. You know, the natural thing when we are hurt, when we are being, you know, attacked, is to revenge. And I want to say that the unrest in the world is because of the unforgiveness among us, the people on the face of the earth. When one does something evil, then one would live the rest of their lives planning a way to get back to the person who was hurt, the other. Or one nation planning to get back to the other nation. But today, the Lord is telling us, do good by saying no to revenge. Yes, I believe that our love, our love is tested the most when we are wronged. You know, when we are wronged, we are tempted to revenge. We want to show that, man, you've done it. I can do it worse than you. But it doesn't help. And so Apostle Peter here is saying that there shouldn't be any dispute that should linger on. No dispute among Christian circles should linger on and on. Avoid revenge. May God help us. I think all of us have fallen short in this area. We have. So we need to cry to the Lord to help us so that we choose to forgive. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's tough to forgive. But the grace of God can sustain us and help us. So say no to retaliation. Say no to paying evil for evil. 
We have a perfect example in Christ Jesus. He was humiliated. He was rebuked. He was generally, name it, every bad thing was done to him and against him on that cross. But scriptures tells us he said nothing. He actually forgave them. So I will say today, brothers and sisters, the call is that do good by forgiving one another. Brothers and sisters, true love is demonstrated when we forgive. And the only way we can forgive is by allowing the love of Christ to compel us. It's only the love of Christ. <laughs> if it hadn't been for Christ, oh my goodness, all the people have forgiven in my life, I wouldn't have forgiven if it hadn't been for Christ. Just think about yourself. Examine yourself. If you have ever forgiven someone, I believe it's been by the grace of God because it can get hard. But the love of God in Christ Jesus makes it possible for us. Hallelujah. Yes, true love, brothers and sisters, as I say, is tested when we are wronged. And our love is shown when we show compassion to those who do not love us, to our enemies. Jesus said that if you love only those that love you, what is that that you've done? Nothing much. But if you go ahead and you love those that don't love you, brothers and sisters, wow, that is phenomenal. Yes, loving our enemies can be tough. Loving those that you know that don't love you can be tough. But that's what God wants us to do. And... By the grace of God, we can do it. Choose the way of love. Hallelujah. When we love and bless those who have wronged us, brothers and sisters, we gather, we invite God's blessings in our lives. So I will conclude by saying, let us go ahead, brothers and sisters, to do good by the grace of God. Because with God, nothing is impossible. And remember, you and me can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. May the Lord bless you. Shall we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to us today. Reminding us and calling upon each one of us to do good. Learning from Jesus Christ. And we know that him as our perfect example and model we can emulate his example. So God, take the lead as you guide us in doing good and contributing significantly to our communities and all the people around us. Father, may you please meet your children at their very point of need. May you bless them. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of God, which transcends human understanding, keep you in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. May his blessings go before you, after you, be upon you, be upon everyone and everything that concerns you. And most so, that blessing help you to do good everywhere and be a blessing. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do not forget to visit the online church of Uganda. You will be blessed. There are many daily devotions and different teachings. May God bless you. Have a great week.